Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. When you think of Montgomery, Alabama, the city's history comes to mind. From the Civil War to civil rights, race is an integral part of Montgomery's past. It was there that Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white person on a local bus, a simple act of defiance that sparked a movement. The Montgomery bus boycott of 1955 led the Supreme Court to force the city to integrate the bus system, and a 26-year-old local pastor became the leader of the civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Now in 2019, five decades after Dr. King led a group of protesters from Selma to Montgomery demanding voting rights for black people, the city is writing a new chapter of history. On October 8, 2019, on the cusp of their 200th anniversary, Montgomery made history by electing its first African-American mayor. And we are honored to have him here with us today. Woo. Please welcome Mayor-elect Stephen Reed. Welcome to the yeah, show. Yeah. I appreciate it. it is. Now, now you you won. I won. <laughs> you did. Yeah. How did you celebrate? You know what? We celebrated with all the people who helped us get there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great watch party. We had a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. I uh, was in the room that night, and then afterward, uh, a good friend of mine. I uh, had a little smaller gathering for just some family and friends, and we were just mm -hmm. kind of able to decompress a little bit, yeah. take it in just for a second, and and just really thank God and thank Amen. everybody who That's helped right. us get there. Yes, you absolutely. Know, yeah. Mary, for those, for those of, uh, well, for the people who don't understand the tenacity of what just has happened, mm -hmm. explain to the people why this win is so significant. So I, I think when you put in the context of Africans being brought here in 1619 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the city of Montgomery being founded in 1819 on the backs of being a slave trading depot on the mm -hmm. Alabama River, mm -hmm. and then you fast forward that to uh, 2019. There, there's something significant, I guess, about the timing of this that I didn't understand when I first got in the race. Mm -hmm. And I think because of Montgomery's complex, hi complex history with uh, the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement, it, it's, it's refreshing uh, because now it really announces that we are a part of the New South. Mm -hmm. We joined Atlanta, Ooh. which at Maynard Jackson in, in the early 70s, uh, we joined many other cities. And so that's the vision and that's the opportunity that people are looking for now uh, to kind of bridge that gap from looking at the past but building toward the future. Did you ever imagine this though when you were young, growing yeah. up in Alabama? I mean, because just because we're in, you know, well, you growing up in Alabama, we were still in the 19 something somethings where they were still right. turning up on the racism. Yeah. And even now, there's mm -hmm. still, you know, we're, we're seeing white supremacy pop up all the time, yeah. especially with Alabama and this abortion law and all of this, which is feminist. Well, it's against women, but same thing. Um, did you ever imagine a situation like this for yourself? No, not not at all. Or just yeah. in general? Not not at all. I mean, yeah. my when, God. I, when I came to Morehouse, I didn't think I'd leave Atlanta. Right, right. So, you know, <laughs> so it was like, I, I want to come here and, and get into the, you know, the corporate grind and kind of work my way up and be CEO or be, you know, have my own business and that sort of thing. And I did some of that for a while. I, I lived in Dallas. I lived in Nashville. So I lived in other parts of the South. Mm -hmm. But going back to Montgomery, I really went back to try to make a difference uh, by starting my own business. But I got frustrated with the lack of progress and not right. seeing the city right. uh, meet its potential. And uh, so I decided to get in uh, politics. And it was something that I grew up in, but it was something I kind of ran away from as right. well. Right. So uh, to be here at this point is something I, I wouldn't have foreseen just Man. a few years ago in itself. Well, you just Look mentioned that. You, yeah, yeah, you just mentioned that you grew up in it uh, because your father, uh, Joe L. Reed, was also a politician. So what advice did he give you as you were walking this path into politics? Oh, I mean, let your word be your bond, let your handshake be your contract. Hey! Oh, hey! So, you know, that's real... old school, right? Yes. That, that's old school. I mean, just, just real simple. Be honest with the people. Let them know what your vision is. And, you know, you win or lose on that. Don't oversell something. If you don't know the answer, you know, tell them you'll find it out. Right. And you're going to try to work at it. You're going to work for them and make sure you keep the people first and the rest will come. Yeah. So he was very He's straightforward about that. What was that, that first hug like, though, after you won? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, oh, that was good. Right, right. And my mom, my mom, you know, saw us first when we kind of came in. And so she was just right there. So that almost kind of, you know, made, oh, made you feel yeah, some, you know, right. feel real emotional, emotional about that. Oh, so yeah. uh, it was a great feeling just seeing all the, the elders in the community yes. and people who come in from yes. out of town for that. 
I mean, that really brought it home for me. Yeah, yes. good stuff. You, know, you are just no stranger to firsts. And in 2012, you became the first probate judge, first African American and youngest mm. yeah. probate judge in Montgomery, Alabama. 2015, the very first probate judge to offer same-sex marriage licenses. Yes. What Turn keeps it up over there. motivating right. you to be to, to to just constantly fight that battle of being the first. Yes. You know, I, I think I grew up around that, and I grew up in a spirit where people uh, challenged us to always excel and to never be comfortable and to look for ways that we could improve anything that we were a part of. And I think because of that uh, leadership, because of the village, that, that expectation, that's something that we've always done. And that's something that I've always kind of taken to heart. And so uh, I don't mind the challenge. I don't mind uh, any of the obstacles that may be there. The only question for me is, can I do it better than the person before me? And can I impact people's lives in a right. positive way? Mm -hmm. And if I can do that, then I don't mind going mm -hmm. through any of the challenges that may be out there. Yeah. You need to talk to yeah. some yeah. of these presidential yeah. candidates. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying to tell you. say that. No, so. I know, I well, know. We have to pick your brain some more, so we will be right back. We have more with Mary Elect Reed right after this. Yes. yes. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. If you're just joining us, we are with the Honorable Stephen L. Reed, who made history a few weeks ago as Montgomery, Alabama's first African-American mayor-elect. There we go. There we go. I love it. I love it. Okay, so you, I love this, I love this statement. You are our ancestors' wildest dreams. Mm. You are that. Yeah. But what are you going to do to help change and better the lives of people in Montgomery, Alabama? Well, I think we, we've got to be ambitious. Uh, we've got to be deliberate and intentional about understanding where some of those needs are. Uh, so for me, you know, a lot of that comes down to public education and yes. investing uh, in our kids, investing in our future and not just talking around that. Mm -hmm. It's also making sure that our teachers and our support staff have the, the needs that uh, met from our standpoint for funding. And we just haven't really done that uh, in Montgomery. But we also want to think, you know, more broad based in terms of what does our economy look like? How do we bring in 21st century knowledge based jobs mm -hmm. uh, to Montgomery and to make sure that we're uh, recruiting and retaining the best talent that we mm -hmm. can. And we want to certainly make sure that our neighborhoods are safe. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. We just saw the segment earlier about the police and how they're dealing with young kids. So we want to build that trust between our police department and our community. Yes. And I think if we do those things, then we'll start to see some of the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, uh, well, right now at Sister Circle, we have an initiative it's called Circle the Vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our aim is to motivate uh, the community to get more involved in the election process, including the state and local levels. Yeah. So as a mayor elect right now, what are you doing to energize and, and just invigorate the people and just kind of just stimulate a want to mm. be involved in the community? Well, we're trying to tell, you know, not just Montgomery, but e even people in, in other communities that the closer the politics are to you, the more it impacts you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the local races don't often get the national attention right, true. and they don't always get the turnout and the energy, but that's where the laws yes, are being changed yes. every day the at the uh, local and state level, a lot more than what's happening in, in, in Washington. Mm -hmm. So we try to talk to neighborhood groups, we try to talk to schools, uh, any group of people we can talk to, even via social media, mm -hmm. we try to let them know that we have to be involved in every race. Every race counts, school board, mm -hmm. county races, mm -hmm. city races, they all matter, whether you know it or not. And sometimes you don't know until something has happened to right. you or there's a problem. And right. so what we've been trying to do is, is to let people know that it's not just about one race is not just yeah. about the mayor's office, it's about all the offices and the political apparatus that impacts everyone regardless of where they live each day. Uh, and we have to be involved in that, not just the presidential races. Right. Well, we'd love to hear a little bit of your acceptance speech and we have it right now. Mm. This election has never been about me. This election has never been about just my ideas. It's been about all of the hopes and dreams that we have as individuals and collectively in this city. Wow, yes. I know there was a lot of tears that night. I know. Because yeah. if I would have been there, I would have been crying. Oh, honey, yes. we, we already know. know. Yes. I would have been so happy for you. Seriously. Yes. I am so happy for you. Yes. But, you know, you did a lot in Montgomery when you were, were, were running and getting people involved and keeping them energized. What do you think that the Democratic Pre uh, presidential candidates need to do mm. to get voters mm. like energized and reinvigorated and, and excited about voting and being a part of this uh, election. Candidly, yeah, you, please, you, candidly. You, you, you have to inspire them. You have mm. to give them a reason to come out, uh, much like President Obama did in 2008, 
it cannot be just about getting one person out of office. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be mm -hmm. what is their vote going to mean to them on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we can't uh, inspire that aspirational change that we want to see, it's going to be hard. And oh, guess what? You can't wait until the last three to six months to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to be talking to uh, people across this country right now in their communities, in their living rooms, in their coffee shops right now, in their nightclubs, wherever they are, you've got to go talk to them and make sure that you're sharing your vision for what we want America to be. It's great to say we want to get rid of President Trump, but then what? Mm -hmm. Then what are you going to do to really make a difference That's to right. change what's happened over the last four years? And I think that message right now is not connecting. He mm. said you got to go to the nightclub. Oh, you got to go to the nightclub. <laughs> That's, right. where, that's where I met my wife. We met in that club. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? One of the most popular things, especially amongst young people, is that they always say, "Well, I'm not voting because that my my vote ain't gonna count. Ain't nobody gonna pay mm, attention yeah. to that." What do you have to say to young people who think that their vote, even if they go to vote, isn't going to count? I, I think we have to keep in mind that we have this president right now because uh, uh, Secretary mm -hmm. Clinton okay. lost three states by less than a hundred thousand votes. That was uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So we have to keep in mind that every vote counts because we don't know what those consequences are going to be after the fact. And I'm not one who likes to deal with things reactively. I like to be proactive. Mm -hmm. And I, my thing is, if you want to see criminal justice reform, if you want to see better uh, economic equality, if you want to make sure that our schools uh, are funded better and we have better opportunities for health care access, then your vote counts. And yeah. it may not impact you, but it may impact someone Somebody in your in family, family. Mm -hmm. someone on your street, someone in your community. Mm -hmm. And that's why every vote has to add up. So we don't want to wait until something's happened and say, well, how did he get in? Right, right. I can't believe he won. And, that's and then you just sat happens. home and didn't vote. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a part of that, not voting, and then, you know, what was going on with Russia. So it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it 100. It a lot. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. what about you? What are your future political plans? Do we see a bid for the White House in your future? You know what? I just want to get the bid to the inauguration on November 12th. Y'all are invited to come to Montgomery for that. So I really want to get in and do the work of, of the people in Montgomery, what they elected us for, and do that with a level of excellence yes. and a level that they uh, really expect of us. And that's what I'm looking forward to is to get to work. And then we'll let the future happen however God has it planned out. Amen. Right. Well, yes. I know one thing. We are praying to God that it doesn't rain on Spell House tomorrow. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So the, you are a Morehouse man, but this yeah. time you're going as mayor-elect. How does that feel when you walk down? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. It started last night. Yeah! It started, it started last night. So right. look, you know what? My classmates uh, and so many people helped fuel uh, our fundraising, helped fuel our support. They came down and knock on doors from Jersey, uh, from Atlanta, from all across this country wow. to literally knock on doors and help us out. So yes. it's great to be able to kind of come back and say, we did and we got it done. Yes, right. absolutely. Right. Well, we're so grateful that you came down to the circle while you. you're here celebrating homecoming. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. Thank, Thank you. you again to Mayor Lexi. Read everybody!